good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure to present today here in front of you. And as Marlene said, we spent a wonderful four months here at GW working on our research. So the topic of my research was, uh, the more general thing was energy diversification of Turkmenistan. And um, um, so today, the way, um, the way I'm going to structure my presentation is I'm going to give um, some background information and present the relevance of the case. Then I'll present the research question. Um, I've divided my paper into three uh, groups of different risks. Um, and I'll talk about them uh, in a detail. And, uh, and then we'll go to conclusions. So while working for three years in Turkmenistan for energy company, for um, um, oil and gas service company, whose uh, um, sorry, uh, okay, from the beginning, right? <laughs> sorry. So uh, I used to work in Turkmenistan for three years for energy company, and it was a small service company. And uh, our clients were companies like Dragon Oil and Petronas, some of the major uh, major companies in Turkmenistan that who work on oil extraction in um, in the country. Now, none of these risks that I'm talking about in my paper and that I'm gonna tell you about today, they haven't come up during our work. And we had, uh, while we had access to our own contract and to the production sharing agreements that the company signed with the government, we never talked about, you know, how does the process of, process of selection of the companies go? Um, what are the potential risks that the government considers? Or what are the risks for the companies? And how, how the cooperation between the company and the host government work in general? Now, um, it, signals, um, it signals the fact that once the operation started in, inside the country, it's very hard to, uh, to adjust the contract. And, sometimes, and at times, host governments would need to go uh, through the arbitration uh, process to reconsider, um, to reconsider uh, the production sharing agreement. Now, why should we talk about Turkmenistan? You know, why is this case important? And why this particular topic is relevant to, um, to current development of the country and the region as a whole? So I highlight um, three major reasons. First is that this is uh, an interesting case study. Turkmenistan is an energy-rich country, just like Indonesia or Burma or Kazakhstan or, or Azerbaijan. It, pre it, cr uh, it presents the case study where you can test theories uh, on development of a resource-rich country, where you can oppose those theories, where you can add up to, the, to those. Um, the second reason is that it's, a, it's uh, interesting to uh, it, it was very interesting for me personally to analyze the dynamics that is going on inside the country because it directly affects the foreign policy of the country. And this is something I've talked about uh, on May 18th, for those of you who've been here. So uh, thinking and examining how the domestic makeup uh, of the energy industry works helps you to understand better what are the fo foreign policy objectives and how they are achieved uh, by Turkmenistan. And finally, it is important to talk uh, you know, to make a research on Turkmenistan just for the purpose of data collection. And uh, everything that I found and used for this research was uh, from open sources. So it was uh, news websites, official websites, uh, reports, uh, Steve Levine's book, which was very useful um, for this research. So uh, there isn't like a single source of information where you can go and find uh, data that you need on the country. So um, uh, this is part of the uh, as part of my research, this is what I was trying to do, to, to gather different sets of data and present them in this research. Now, um, what's going on in the country, right? Uh, and why is energy industry so important? So, just to give you a sense of how big is the industry in Turkmenistan, uh, the country supplied uh, as much, um, as much nat natural gas uh, to the former Soviet, uh, Soviet states during the Soviet Union as much as Russia did. And given the fact that Russia is one of the major exporters of natural gas, um, you can see how much capacity Turkmenistan had uh, already back, um, back like 30, 40 years ago. Um, according, there isn't unfortunately any recent surveys on how much uh, natural gas resource the country possesses, but according to the um, geological survey of, from 2008-2009 conducted by a British company, Turkmenistan holds the fourth largest, largest world threat, la largest reserves. And um, so that's uh, on a regional and international level. Speaking more about domestic level, Turkmenistan's, 
energy export bring 44% of budget revenues. So that's, that's a big number, and that means that the country is actually very much dependent on how much energy we can export, how reliable our partners are, and uh, you know what happens in the future. And uh, give, say, having said that, it's important to, uh, to note that right after um, the country gained independence, Russia was one of the major exporters of the natural gas. However, due to different geopolitical and political interplay, interplay in the region, that situation changed, and now uh, Turkmenistan has China as its major importer. So what has changed is that Turkmenistan has a different partner. However, it's still the major partner who brings, um, in cooperation with that partner, brings the major budget revenues. Just to give you a little more sense of, uh, you know, uh, the map and geography. So Turkmenistan has five major pipelines and uh, just to highlight some of the major um, gas sites. So down here we have uh, what used to be called South Yolatan uh, uh, gas field and today this is called Galkanish, uh, Galkanish natural gas field. Um, the world's biggest gas field, where comp where private foreign companies are uh, willing to take a, to take to have equity in, and uh, this um, this uh, this gas site is ex is expected to be a source of gas supply for uh, for Tapi, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India uh, pipeline. Uh, here we have a group of uh, gas sites um, called Bakhtiarlik which is the um, source of the Central Asia China pipeline, source of gas. And down here we have the Daulet-Abad field, which was developed during the Soviet time and uh, still serves as, uh, as a source of gas supply for, to Iran and then further to Turkey. Um, to give you a little bit more of uh, graphs and information, and once again, this was all compiled from open source. In 2015 is the projected, uh, proje all, all projected numbers. So as you can see, um, from 2013 and 2014, two-thirds of Turkmenistan's uh, natural gas production goes for export and only one-third is consumed domestically and that includes, um, that includes uh, consumption of the, for the development of local industries. And uh, some of the major uh, exporters are Russia, Iran and China and here we see that China has been very consistent um, for, um, in export of in import actually of Turkmen uh, natural gas and the projected number um, projected number of imports from Turkmenistan in 2015 is 55 billion cubic meters which is twice more than what it used to import um, even in 2014 so with Russia we see this very you know steady decline in um, in imports of Turkmen natural gas and that's due to political relations between two countries as well as current crisis between uh, West and Russia. And with Iran the situation depends more on what's going internally um, inside the country with regards to sanctions. So as you can see Turkmenistan at the moment doesn't really have diversified exports uh, of its energy and given the fact that 44% of budget revenues come from energy, e energy exports that's something um, that's something that needs to be worked on. Now, um, given all the importance of the industry for the country, um, my initial question and uh, the overall question is why not to work with private companies? Why not to give out the, co the, the contracts to, co uh, to companies like BP and Shell who are willing to come um, to come to Turkmen market? Now, the final research question that I was addressing is what are the risks associated with working with private foreign companies and what are the best methods of, of their regulations? And uh, these are the risks considered both on the side of the Turkmen government as well as um, on the side of private companies. And uh, I'm gonna address some of them. So as I said, I've grouped them into three major categories. And uh, you, uh, once the papers are published, you will be able to find more um, online and read in the detail. But today I'll talk about one risk from every group. So here, um, the group about on selection of the companies, I'll talk about corruption and manipulation. And just to bring you an example, the very first case of when Turkmenistan went to arbitration court was against the Argentinian company. Uh, the tender that the company participated in was uh, was organized by a British company, and uh, Turkmenistan didn't have a capacity to oversee the process. So as a result, uh, these opened the room for corruption and manipulation, and the receptive individuals 
but, um, and the receptive individuals um, you know, colluded with the companies and breeders, the Argentinian company came up, um, turned out uh, to be the only bidder and as a result the winner of the tender. So um, the way to regulate this, this kind of risks is to hold um, track records of the companies and the due diligence, but it's also important to to reinvest money into development of human capacity in the country, where you know the, where the tenders can be hold, can be held by um, by local companies, um, you know, pursuing national interests rather than and this uh, rather than foreign companies, which will help to reduce the to reduce the risk of corruption and manipulation from the side of foreign companies. It's also important to improve the investment climate of the country and uh, in the paper uh, my suggestion was to hold, um, uh, to produce something like do business into Afghanistan guidelines which will set out all the rules uh, and regulations of working inside the country to make sure that, that, uh, that future tenders and bids attract bigger companies with better reputations. Now the second set of risks is related to signing of the contract contract and the content of the contract itself. And here I'll talk about environmental damages on the example of Kazakhstan and uh, Kazakhstan um, Kashagan oil field, um, which, which is a clear illustration of how how important it is to include every, um, you know, different aspects of working uh, of the private companies inside um, inside the country, but it's also, it also signals how it's impossible to foresee everything that, that, that can potentially happen. So with Kashagan, um, foreign companies signed the contract for the development uh, of the field, however environmental damages caused were, clo caused were not included into the contract. As a, re as a result um, of a very difficult technical uh, peculiarities of the field, the, uh, the building uh, around the uh, I mean, the building and construction of that just started before the operations um, over the field, they caused a lot of environmental damages in um, 2001. And uh, uh, Kazakh government went into a dispute with, uh, with then, opera with then uh, operating company of the field, and they've suspended the license of the company and uh, assigned 3.5 billion uh, compensation, which, which is supposed to be paid during the course of operation of the field. Now, some of the regulations which are possible to put in place to regulate this kind of risks is to increase the stakes of the companies in, in the project. And uh, by increasing um, the equity and sharing the ownership over the project. It's also um, important to, again, empower local communities and uh, provide them with tools of monitoring and assessment, as well as reporting um, to the competent bodies and, um, um, and being able to lobby for or against certain operations of companies. Uh, finally, the third set of risks, the third category, and uh, this is more, this, um, this set of risks is a little different from what I was considering before, and uh, through the examples that I'm gonna make now, I'll show you, um, um, I'll demonstrate how it is different. So, um, Companies in general are not very much interested in, in investing into pipeline systems uh, of the projects. And uh, here uh, I'd like to talk about Tengiz, uh, again, case of Kazakhstan, Tengiz oil field, where Chevron got the production sharing agreement, but decided not to invest into the pipeline, um, into construction of the pipeline. And uh, this part of the investment, this part of the project was taken over by, um, by a group of investment investors from Netherlands and Oman. As a result, Chevron lost control uh, for a while, lost control over export of the natural of the of oil from the field. And you can imagine, if you're an oil producing company, you extract the oil, but then you can't deliver it to your client, and that's the part that actually helps you make that actually you know makes money. So you can imagine how much you lose. And in the end, uh, Chevron uh, won the dispute, but it caused um, it caused the delay of the project for a number of years. Now, uh, going back to Turkmenistan, uh, current case is the um, is the work of Chinese national petroleum company CNPC uh, in, in Turkmenistan and in Central Asia, and I find it as a successful case for the investor. So this is uh, this is something that private companies might consider 
um, so what happened is that CNPC got the backing of the Chinese government. They've provided a loan to Turkmen government to construct the pipeline to its borders, and this is one of the requirements and um, one of the requirements that Turkmenistan works on. But at the same time, CNPC invested 50% 50 um, share into construction of the pipeline through Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. So what happens now is that first, the company has a stake in one of the largest gas fields, Bakhtiyar, the gas site in Turkmenistan. So it basically has an equity in uh, in a gas producing um, producing venture inside the, in, uh, inside the, the producing company. But at the same time, it has uh, it holds a dual ownership with Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. So through Central Asia, which allows it to secure um, safe, you know, an undestructive supply of uh, of turbine natural gas to China. So in case if there is a, a conflict in, in Central Asia or if companies uh, or if governments of Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan decide to cut off the supply, they won't be they won't really be able to do so without violation uh, of their uh, contract terms. Now um, some of the major conclusions that I came to is that um, Turkmenistan is a risk averse country because because the country has so much taken in the development of its natural energy, um, of its natural and uh, natural gas sphere, and according to Binderman um, argument, you know, if the country, if the country has, uh, if the country possesses huge amounts of energy, and uh, majority of its budget revenues come from the from export of this energy, it is going to be risk averse, and the government would not be willing to. Um, would not be willing to risk by inviting um, by inviting and sharing you know, production and uh, um, production and revenues from development of the sites, and this is exactly the case of Turkmenistan. Now, um, talking about all the regulations which are possible to put in place, uh, the regulations should provide an incentive for foreign companies to maximize the, the benefits uh, which are brought to the government in return for, for rewards from the government. So it should not be the case where the company is afraid to break any rules or hold its operations because it's going to be punished. Instead, it should, it should, the system should work in a way that the company is rewarded for doing a good job rather than uh, being punished for be, doing a bad job. So this is the, the, the incentive, the, the more, more of an incentive system. And finally, um, it is necessary to develop, to identify um, to, uh, to identify obstacles and downsides at every, in every different field of the energy sphere uh, and energy, energy industry of Turkmenistan to, uh, to be able to develop a strategy of how to address each of that obstacle individually. And uh, in the end, hopefully it's going to lead to construction of, a, um, construction of a better reward system, as I've already mentioned, rather than a uh, punishment system and um, avoiding um, taking risks. Okay, so I will conclude here. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and uh, I'm um, looking forward to your comments and questions. service that the that the policy paper uh, uh, attempts and that's because um, it attempts to get at, at, at one of the most enduring mysteries of Central Asia and that's that's uh, for, the, for those who watch the whole region more than Uzbekistan and which is pretty in, in, inscrutable. Uh, and uh, Kazakhstan, a little less inscrutable, but but still uh, not quite, um, not 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 always understandable. The the Turkmen and Turkmenistan is unfathomable, uh, and 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 so uh, to to the to its to Westerners and to its neighbors as well. 
And, uh, and, and so th this paper going after one, one of the stickiest and most frustrating questions, why have oil and gas deals, uh, big oil and gas deals that move the needle been uh, concluded all around the region, across in uh, the Caucasus, north in Russia, and, and, and of course in Kazakhstan, why, why have they not been why have big deals not been concluded in Turkmenistan? What what is what's the thing? And and, and because Turkmenistan has been so uh, lacking in communication, um, what you've gotten is is uh, a lot of guesswork and and really um, um, unnecessary and um, uh, um, unconstructive. Um, conclusions that fall into the category of ridicule and 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 so uh, and so this this is what when I'm reading this paper I'm reading through this paper and, and when I want this we we need this you know uh, we need the, the paper that um, that Nazik is producing um, so uh, what 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 was the West after what why did the West, in the beginning of the 90s, identify single out Turkmenistan for foreign policy? Why did the U.S. do this? Why did um, Europe? Because Turkmenistan was seen from the early 90s as the as, as the alter as the, as as the uh, correlation correlating country to Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan, the way station for. Uh, hydrocarbons connecting the Caucasus to the West and carving out that, that region as an economic appendage of Russia. And on the other side, Turkmenistan connecting, and the presumption that Turkmenistan would be the way station for Central Asia to send its resources to connect Central Asia again to the West, a, an independent economic pipeline outside the region uh, 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 giving the region the capacity, the whole region, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, the main, uh, the main uh, countries, um, a, 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 a channel, an independent economic channel, and by extension, an independent political channel outside the region. But it didn't happen, right? So, so, uh, uh, Azerbaijan and Georgia built built their pipeline networks out, and uh, year after year, and, uh, and 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 attempt after uh, attempt of getting Turkmenistan hook, hooked up, were all the, the attempts were all frustrated, and, uh, and 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 never really clear why. Well, long before uh, uh, the the subject of energy diversity diversification in Europe was ever spoken of. And Tur Turkmenistan was already, uh, was, was already a, a, a great mystery. And, uh, and so um, the paper, I like that the paper casts this subject on, on a big tableau. So, so the, the, uh, the um, uh, examples that you put in boxes from Kazakhstan, from Azerbaijan, um, I think really serve a strong, a strong purpose and demonstrate that that the subject of, of uh, okay, we we have seen Turkmenistan through Western eyes. What are the Turkmen thinking? And what or from for, uh, from the point of view? Turkmen, they're seeing this parade of Western companies and uh, and European officials, EU officials, and uh, and one uh, deputy secret uh, assistant secretary of state from the United States after another coming through and lavishing praise on uh, Niazov and then very Muhammadov and, and so on. What 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 was going through Tur uh, the Turkmen? Mind and, and and by extension on the big tableau through that we can start to understand well, what were the Kazakhs thinking, what were the Azeris thinking, and so on. The 
the Uzbeks in maybe one day will understand Putin as well. <laughs> um, so, so the the paper, I I would like to see more granularity, and and, and it's and it's it's in the following um, areas. So so uh, the, the 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 paper cites risks that the that the that the uh, the Turkmen um, uh, perceive a a laundry list of risks to signing a deal with companies, and that and the reason is that Carlos Bulgaroni screwed them over. Um, well, um, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Russia, Uzbekistan, uh, the, the, their answer to this, and, and really countries all over the world navigate this. Uh, developing countries around the world navigate the, the, the risks, and usually what they're doing is hiring their own small army, and the army is investment bankers who, 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 who have a stake in getting it right. Um, Turkmen refused, did, or I should say, did not do this, and 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 I, I think it would serve a big purpose to juxtapose. Right? So you so you have uh, the standard approach to not getting screwed over. That you you have your equalizer. Why did the Turkmen not do that? What you know from uh, from, from their perspective. Um, is Exxon and Chevron have been parked in Ashgabat for years, pleading to have a uh, to have a peace, to have an onshore peace of the of the South Yalatan field. Um, are they are they put to the to the Turkmen? Does the Turkmen government put them into the same boat as Fridas? Um Diversification, energy diversification is an indisputable good. Um, which direction, from a from to, from from uh, I, I guess from a uh, I would like to see from a Turkmen perspective what's viewed as the if we could have any route what would be that diversified route but also from your perspective as a, a shrewd independent agnostic analyst which would be the best route would, is it west should should transcaspian happen is tappy if if the uh, if if afghanistan became stable and iran deal we're on the cusp of a deal with iran in the paper you, you, um, you write a couple sentences um, uh, kind of dismissing Iran as a root because uh, Iran itself produces natural gas. Why, why would it want to get in bed with another natural gas uh, producer? And then, and then just uh, uh, natural antagonism um, between the two countries. It's not satisfying. I, I would like to see a, a, a more robust uh, um, analysis laying out the facts. Um, it's, uh, it's, it seems to me that that's the most exciting new development that we've got, and it, and it, and it, and it would be very interesting to, um, to hear you really dive into that and, and uh, take it on. Um, and. Uh, 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 finally, I'd like to see, this. so I could see this topic uh, having a lot of uh, traction, relevance, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and be, being interesting for a wide audience in order to get there, I'd like to have a top line, a top line at the very top of the paper that states right that so so you um, go after these answers that uh, these questions so you do make it clear why Turkmenistan has behaved differently from from everyone else 
which direction the gas should go, and and, and uh, what does it mean if that happens, and um, and then, and then state in a single sentence why that's important. Twelve, no more than twelve. Minutes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.